journey with me, Ryan. In this next section, we're going to pick up the switching overview. For those who don't know, you can contact me here on YouTube, on LinkedIn, or Twitter. Jumping in into a switching overview. So far, what we've talked about within the LAN element, we've discussed duplexing and the different variations of duplexing along with speed. That was discussed in our last video. And then prior to that, we touched on this concept around collision domains, broadcast domains, CSMA CD, and the history of what switching was and what it's become today and why we needed to evolve from hubs and bridges into switches. One of the key parts I want to pull out from the previous videos was I mentioned that a switch allows you to have a different collision domain. If you remember previously, we said a hub had all its devices connected and all these devices, when one sent traffic onto the wire, it was electronically broadcasted out all of the ports. And this is why hub is sometimes called a repeater. And due to this, only one wire could be active at a given time. And it heavily used the CSMA CD to help because everything was in the collision domain, in the same collision domain. When switches came out, it had this new concept of memory on each port. So as frames were received at multiple times on different ports, it was able to sit in this buffer and the CPU or as we previously discussed, the ASIC, which are specialized chips, would actually handle the switching request and forward the frames to the correct destination. And that was instead of sort of layer one physical signals, it was based on the layer two addressing. But what we didn't go into is how that layer two addressing is actually built and how the switch knows where to send that information. So what we do need to know for this section is frames are forward based on the MAC address table. And I've put a little star here next to frames because hopefully you can see that because I'm using the terminology of a frame, we know that the PDU, the protocol data unit for frame is at layer two in the OSI model. So when we're talking about frames and switching, we're primarily talking about layer two. There is a video previously in the course that goes into the OSI in more depth and hopefully that's something you've already watched so you have an understanding of the OSI model and where switching fits into that. It is possible for switching to fit into the more upper layers which is layer 3 and layer 4 and there be kind of a multi-layer switch but for now as far as the CSEN is concerned we need to really focus on the layer 2 element of switching with the understanding that there is this possibility of layer three. So it keeps a list of MAC addresses inside of the CAM or MAC table. So there's a table inside a switch and on one side it has the column or port and on the other side it has the MAC address. And it have a list of all the ports that are available on the switch providing it's learned some kind of MAC address on it. So it may say outside port one, there's MAC address XX. Outside port two, there's MAC address YY. Outside port three, MAC address ZZ and MAC address ZY. Outside four, there's MAC address AB and it will continue to list all the MAC addresses that the switch is aware of. Here, you see I've actually put the same port twice, which is port 3, and that's because outside port 3 is actually aware of two MAC addresses. It's aware of ZZ and ZY. And the reason for that is because if we think about our switching domain, let's say we have two switches that are directly connected, and off the back of these two switches, let's say there's a PC here, another PC, and then a PC over here. This switch will actually see both MAC addresses of these two PCs as this port and obviously a single MAC address for this port. This switch will see this PC's MAC address out of this port. What's key to understand is as the switch learns MAC addresses on particular ports, 
it then populates the table and its responsibility as frames comes in is to look at the destination and to switch it to the correct interface. It doesn't necessarily care whether the next device is the end client, as in is the actual PC itself, or whether it's simply another switch. So a few questions come to mind. Obviously, how is this table built? What if a MAC address is received and we're not aware of the destination? How does the table keep up to date? And these are the sort of questions that we're going to answer on our next slide. So I put together four elements that are, we're going to dive into in a bit more depth to understand how switches learn where source and destinations are in order to populate this table. And once it has this table, it's able to look at the layer two frame information, the destination in particular, and know which port to send the traffic out on. But like I said, first of all, in order to get that table, it needs to learn. And how does it learn? Well, it learns based on the source MAC address. So let's say we have a switch and the switch has, let's say, three PCs connected into it. And on these PCs, or on this switch even, we've got port one, two, three. And in its CAN table, it has two columns, which has port and it has MAC. As frames come into the switch, the switch will look at the source MAC address of the NIC that's sending frames into the switch. And remember, when we talk about frames, we talk about layer two. The switch will go, I received a frame on port one. It will look at its MAC address table and it will notice that it doesn't have a MAC address for port one. So because of that, it will look at the source and it will populate its table with, let's say, XX, which is the MAC address of this device. If, for example, it already knows about MAC address, let's say on PC2 here, connected on port 2, it's already aware that PC2 has the MAC address of YY, then when it receives that frame and it's aware of the source MAC address, it uses this opportunity to do something different. The switch will refresh the timer it has for that MAC address on that port. Because this timer will go down. And the reason it needs to go down is because as devices are moved, changed, or no longer being used, it needs to free up the cam table because the memory it uses and it needs to ensure that if a device is moved from one location to another, it correctly times out, so it's able to then forward the traffic out the correct port. Otherwise, what would happen is you're left with some sort of stale session where a particular switch thinks it's out of a port to reach a device, where actually it's reachable out of a different port on a different device. Now, when it goes to actually forwarding the frame, the frame could be a variation of things. It could be a multicast, it could be a broadcast, it could be a unicast, or something called an unknown unicast. And why is it important to know what type of forwarding? Well, ultimately, the forwarding is based on the destination. So if the destination is a multicast, broadcast, or unicast, it affects what the switch performs against that frame when it's received in from a device. Okay, so moving into the forwarding in more detail. There are different types of forwarding. The first forwarding is simply called forwarding, and it's based on if the layer two address is a unicast address. And the way the switch would consider it being a unicast address is if the switch knows where the destination lives. So we have, let's say, a switch with three ports, and let's say we have PCs on the end of all these ports. As this PC generates the frame obviously it's going to have data let's say it's a TCP IP so there is your layers 4 to 5 sorry 7 to 5 there's your layer 4 there's your layer 3 but in the layer 2 header 
Ethernet header. There's those two fields, which is the destination and source MAC. The source will obviously be this guy here, and the destination will be this person up here. Well, when this PC builds that frame and he populates with the destination MAC of this person and the source MAC of himself, and it goes into the switch, the switch will look at its table, and providing that it's able to see within the table the correct port to reach the destination MAC, then it's able to unicast that traffic. Therefore, it doesn't need to send traffic out of any other ports. So you have a nice, clean, what we call unicast communication between these two devices. And this is what we call also a standard Ford traffic. Our next option is to flood the traffic. If we have a switch and we have multiple devices off that switch and the PC, when it creates its frame inside the Ethernet header, it doesn't know the destination. Instead, it can populate it with the all Fs address. And when the switch looks at the destination and sees these all Fs, what that means to the switch is it needs to send the traffic out of all of the interfaces except for the interface it was received on. And this is called flooding. The switch does this to learn where hosts are in the network. There are also other types of flooding. That was an example of broadcast. You have something called multicast, which is beyond the CSENT, but if we had, let's say, two devices out on the wire that needed to receive a particular frame, then we know unicast is one to one, and we know broadcast is to all, well multicast is one to many. So if we wanted to communicate with two devices, we would send some sort of multicast frame. And the last one to know of is a unknown unicast. Let's say when this PC built the frame, it built its data, done its TCP, got its IP, and in the Ethernet header, put the destination and source, and it knew the destination MAC of this PC, so it's able to fully create this frame. As that frame went into the switch, the switch may or may not know where this particular MAC address is located. And let's say, for whatever reason, the PC knew, but the switch didn't, the switch will still need to flood that frame because the switch wouldn't know what port to send it out of. And we consider this an unknown unicast because the PC was trying to perform some sort of unicast with someone else, but the switch in the middle was unaware or didn't know where the destination was and therefore had to flood it to everyone. Now, flooding is a key element of actually how a switch builds its CAM table or MAC address table because as the information is flooded to everyone on the switch, when the interested host responds to say, hey, that traffic is for me, the switch is able to see the response come back in and because it's able to see the response, it's able to see the source that's generating the traffic and as we know, switches learn based on source address. So as the response back to the machine asking the question or flooding the data out, it's able to now populate the table. And there's also the option to discard. So there are two main reasons why a switch may discard a packet. Well, there's actually a couple. If the switch or cam table is full, so the CPU or RAM utilization, and this depends too because some switches will actually turn into a hub and start sending the traffic out of all its interfaces in an attempt to try and deliver the traffic. And this also doubles up as a attack that someone can perform on your switch by purposely filling out the cam table by sending in lots of traffic from a different source address. The switch will continue to learn until the memory is full and then ultimately start sending traffic out of all the interfaces. And when it does, 
the attacker will be sitting on a particular port with something like Wireshark and is able to take that traffic. Another reason it may discard is one rule of switching is you can't send traffic back out the interface it was received on. So if the destination MAC address was YY but the CAM table tells the switch that YY is back out the interface the traffic came in on, the switch will have no option but to discard that traffic. Now to put all that into perspective and to put some sort of flow chart around it, I've put together a step-by-step -step of the actions that a switch takes as it receives a frame. So step one is obviously receive a frame and depending on whether it knows the source address or not it performs two actions. If it doesn't know about the source address or source MAC that lives on that port it will add it to its CAM table and if it does know about the device it will refresh the age timer because obviously that device is active on the network. If after a period of time, I think it's about five minutes, that device doesn't respond, then it will clear the table. The next question the switch needs to ask is based on the destination. Is the destination a broadcast, meaning it's to everyone on the network, it has the Fs in the destination field? Is it a multicast? Is it to a bunch of people on the network? Or is it an unknown unicast, meaning for some reason the sending device has populated the MAC address inside the destination field, but I as a switch am not aware of it, so I consider it an unknown unicast. If it's any of these types of destinations, then my job is to flood the frame. I need to send it to everyone except for the port it was received on. If it's not a broadcast, multicast, or an unknown unicast, then I need to ask myself a second question. Is the source and destination on the same interface? If it is, then I need to filter the frame. I need to discard it, get rid of it. And lastly, if it's gone through all of this process, then it must be a unicast address. And because I don't need to flood it, I must know what the correct port is to forward the traffic. Therefore, I'm able to forward the unicast to the correct port. Okay, so that's all we've got time for in this lesson. Just to recap what we've learned. We first of all started with the switch no overview. We started by having a conversation around the previous videos, understanding and ensuring we understand the difference between broadcast domain, collision domains, and why we had to evolve from hub to switches, and how switches gives us individual collision domains, and introduce this concept of memory on the ports and what we call the CAM table where our MAC addresses are stored. We said that unlike hubs which simply repeat the traffic at layer 1 with the electrical signals, switches utilize the layer 2 frame and in particular the source and destination MAC address to forward traffic out of the correct port that it needs to be forwarded. We then dove into how the actual switch creates this table by first of all understanding how switches learn. We said as frames come into the network, the switch looks at the source MAC address inside that frame and populates its table. And depending on where it needs to forward the traffic, it performs a variety of different tasks. We then went into understanding multicast and unknown unicast. We finished up with an overview of the flow showing the decision process that the switch takes step by step in order to forward a frame, deciding whether the frame should be filtered, flooded or simply forward to the correct destination. In our next couple of videos this concept of switching will come more clear when we dive into protocols like the address resolution protocol ARP because those sort of protocols show you really how the switch learns. And when we get into actually looking at the switch MAC address table, some of these concepts will become more clear. I hope this video has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing. And if it has been, please do like and subscribe.